How to Optimize CPU for Gaming If you are a gamer, you already know that the performance of your GPU and your CPU matters when trying to achieve a smooth playable frame rate. Your GPU is the workhorse, but you don't want it being held back by a bottlenecking CPU, do you? CPU performance usually deteriorates when it hits either a power limit or a thermal limit. Even when neither is the case, you can probably free up CPU resources by closing applications that are not currently in use. Also sometimes, even when the average frame rate is alright, you will be getting micro stutters, indicating low 1% and 0.1% frame rates. Although not an issue when you are using your machine for productivity, these can ruin your gamma play experience, especially when playing an ultra-fast first-person shooter game. There are a few things you can do to make sure your CPU is well optimized for gaming. Please watch the video to the end and do not rewind to find out how to increase processor performance. But before the video starts, I ask you to subscribe to the channel and like this video. Why your CPU might not actually be optimized for gaming. Your PC is a general purpose machine that handles many different tasks and not just gaming. The manufacturer will have no idea of your specific use case, and you are the only one that can tweak the settings to your satisfaction. CPU Cooling Although the gains might not be instant, the cooling of your CPU is extremely important if you want to get the most out of it and prolong its lifespan. An overheated CPU can result in your PC operating much slower than normal, shutting down or even damaging components. You've got two options if you're looking to cool your CPU. First up is air cooling which consists of fans being placed around the internals of your PC. Then we've got liquid cooling which consists of pipes filled with cool water running around within the case of your PC. In the world of PC building, liquid cooling is only really carried out by those who have built a few PCs so take that into account when choosing your cooling method. We'd recommend you to have a go at air cooling before moving on to the more complex and more expensive liquid cooling. If you have a laptop, then be sure to watch this video. In this video, I told you 11 ways to cool a laptop. The link to this video will be in the description under this video. Overclocking. One of the more complicated ways to get increased performance from your CPU is to overclock it. Overclocking is where you push your computer's components harder and faster than the manufacturers intended them to go. And whilst it can most definitely speed up your system, it can often be quite complicated. For example, overclocking an Intel Core i7-860 that normally runs at around 2.80 GHz out the box can mean that you get well over 2.80 GHz out of it. Manufacturers tend to be conservative with their out-of-the-box clock speeds to ensure that the CPUs do not overheat for the average consumer. However, if you know what you are doing and have the correct cooling methods in place, overclocking will not pose as a problem. Each individual CPU is different regardless of whether they are the same model number from a manufacturer. It can sometimes be the case that whilst one person's CPU will overclock to a certain GHZ, another person's might not be able to get anywhere near that speed. Definitely worth keeping in mind if you've seen someone overclock your CPU to a certain speed. If you're intending on overclocking your CPU, then take into account that you might need to upgrade other components. Overclocking will ultimately give you a decent boost in performance, especially if you edit lots of photos or do a lot of video transcribing. And now let's start optimizing the processor through Windows. In the description below this video, I will leave a link to the file we need. Download the file and unzip it to your desktop. But before you change something in the Windows settings, I strongly recommend that you create a restore point, this is necessary so that you can roll back all the changed settings at any time. But these settings are absolutely safe. Everyone has their own device, for someone these settings will give a very good increase in performance and speed, and for someone on the contrary. So I recommend just creating a restore point. If everything works correctly in the end, then you can simply delete the restore point. Let's start optimizing the processor by disabling unnecessary programs from Auto Run. To do this, we will use the Auto Runs program. Auto Runs is a program for monitoring the automatic loading of various applications, services, and components that start when Windows boots. 
I recommend disabling all unnecessary programs that you will not use when starting Windows. Leave only the most necessary and important ones. But do not disable those programs and services that you do not know. The next folder is a complete shutdown of Windows Update. Inside this folder there is a command that completely disable Windows Update in one click. To do this, run this file as an administrator. And if you want to turn Windows Update back on, you can do it just as easily by going to this folder and running this file as an administrator. Then we optimize the power plan. In this folder I left a ready-made power plan scheme that is configured for maximum performance in games. To apply it, you need to first run this regedit file and give permission to make a change to the system. After that, you can import this power scheme. Here we apply all the commands and rejected files. Cleaning old thermal paste and reapplying. A thermal paste is very critical for CPU functioning because it transports heat between the integrated heat spreader in the CPU and your CPU cooler. Think of it as a bridge that allows your vehicle to cross from one side to the other. Only, in this case, the heat is the vehicle and without a properly functioning thermal paste, it will be stuck on the CPU side of the equation. In some cases, if the CPU is more than 4 or 5 years old, you might be hitting thermal throttling because your CPU's thermal paste has dried out. In such cases, you will need to clean thermal paste off CPU and reapply. Well, that's all for me, I hope I helped you. If yes, then I ask you to subscribe to the channel and like this video. This inspires me to create new videos for you. See you soon, friends.